What's up everybody? This is Justin from 1126 Art Studio. So last year I worked on some uh, cool movie posters where I twisted board games into horror films. So today I'm going to use one of those posters to show you a really cool highlight painting technique that I do with my Wacom tablet. I also use it with my mouse, but the technique is all the same. So with that, let's hop into it. Let's go. So we're going to focus on bringing in these highlights. Uh, we've got a top light coming down onto the character and you can see some of the highlights here but I just wanted to bring them out a little bit more and you'll see on the final um, how much it pushes it. So I turn them off. I'm going to make a new layer. Make sure your brush is on a softer brush. I'm also going to make sure that my brush has um, a lower flow at full opacity. I'm gonna zoom in here and the light is coming from the top. So I'm just gonna kind of quickly start painting some of these highlights. Where I want them. Again, I'm using a Wacom tablet but you don't have to. I just find it to be a little bit easier. You can kind of see again there. Here. Right. Come up here. Make a nice little edge here. There. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a layer mask on here. I'm gonna lower the flow and lower the opacity even more. And then really using black to get rid of my highlight, my highlight uh, painting. I'm gonna go through, just gonna have to put that opacity up a little bit more and then just start chipping away at where I kind of want it to kind of blend in a little bit more, just so there's not such a harsh round edge. of it right um so if i turn on my original highlight layers you can see i focused in on the hand area the knife area i went around the edge kind of brought off some here and some here hit this uh plumbing pole then what really brings it all together is just your final coloring and really now the character is just super popped off. I popped in a simple levels layer here and then also a color lookup, which if you don't know what color lookup is, that's right here uh, in the layer styles uh, or layer adjustments. Um, you can go to color lookup and there's all these different, uh, almost like, um, I don't know what they're like preset coloring uh they're all super cool so definitely play around with that but to take it a step further um i always command a copy merged and then i'm going to use command v to paste and then i'm going to take this and control click convert to smart object that way the layer, I can go back and um, change anything that I do to the layer, which is super nice. Then I'm gonna go up to filter, 
camera raw. And this really helps get anything looking very cinematic. I always start here with the presets, uh, which has changed um, since I did this poster, right? Um, so let's go into the, cin the cinematic ones. I just kind of go through and see what kind of um, a vibe, I guess. Um, there's really no right and wrong here, but just kind of like what's giving me the vibe that I'm kind of liking. I like this VN07, uh, this vi Vintage 7, right? And I just used this as a baseline. So now I'm gonna go into the edits here, drop down to basic. I like to push the clarity. You can mesh with, with the temperature. There's, man, this is just such a great tool. Push the contrast, push the highlights a bit. You can bring out the shadows, make the shadows darker. Drop into color mixer. Here, uh, since this poster has a lot of green, you can really mess with. This kind of shows you the luminance, saturation on the green here. And really all of this is just a matter of preference. There is no right and wrong. I just kind of honestly just go through and really just mess around until like my eye is just kind of like, wow, um, I like that. Color grading is also a huge tool. Bring this out. This is the shadows. Highlights. The more you bring out to the outer circle, the more it's going to really affect the color. So then you can kind of mess with the blending here. Again, just kind of messing around. Sharpening. You can go into the curves. Really bring those up, down, mess around. Bring out the reds, right? Mess with the greens. There's different effects, vignetting. So you can push that darkness just a little bit more around the edges if you want. You can throw in some extra grain. It's going to run the camera raw. And because we made it a smart object, you can then go turn it on and off. Look how much more cinematic this looks. And then if you decide that you want to go in and change things, all you have to do is double click the camera raw and it's gonna bring it right back up and you can just change on a whim, right? Hit okay. Now, what if, cause this happens to me all the time. This is why I love this technique as well. Say I realize that this glass of eyeballs needs to be a little bit more brought out, right? So then I can turn off my camera raw layer and just for ease here, I'm gonna make a layer here underneath with some white kind of bring out the highlights here, right? So then I'm going to hit Command A, copy merged. I'm going to turn on my camera raw layer, double click this icon. So it brings me into the smart object. I can then paste my new artwork. So you can see this is the old, this is the new. I can select both layers, merge those, and then I'm gonna hit save. Go back to my final, and then as you can see, it used my camera raw filter, but now my eyeballs are brought out. So you can go back and change your original file and then resave it. And you won't lose your camera raw because you made that layer a smart object. Super huge tool, very powerful. Well, that's it guys, that's all there is to it. It's super easy, super powerful tool. Hope you all like the tip. Let me know down in the comments what other 
tips and tricks that you guys might all want to see, and I will do my best to help out in any way I can. Until next time, guys, have a great day. Happy creating.